Good morning and welcome to our service this morning on this, the second Sunday after Trinity. A particular welcome to any of you who may be joining us for the first time. It's very good to have you with us. Do visit our website www.stmarysredbourne.org and that's got more information about our church and about news and other events. It's also Father's Day today and for those of you who are a father I hope you have a wonderful day. I know it's going to be a little bit more tricky with the restrictions in place currently but uh, whatever form it takes, wherever you are, I hope you have a great day and are thoroughly spoiled. I usually like to share one or two thoughts and reflections. Uh, for me, the big piece of news has been that we've been able to reopen St Mary's since Monday. And that's just been such a joy, uh, quite emotional and special. Uh, prepared the church over the weekend and then just unlocked the door on Monday morning. Uh, thankfully, no long queues, um, no great crowds, but just people gently going into the church to spend some time in that holy, uh, God-filled place. Um, and that's been really lovely. So do come and visit if you'd like to. If you haven't made it to St Mary's yet, uh, you'd be really welcome. There are some guidelines in the church on display. So do use the hand gel as you arrive and as you leave. Do have a look at those guidelines and observe them, please, just to make sure that you're kept safe and everybody else as well. The church will be open every day of the week from 10 o'clock in the morning until five o'clock in the afternoon and all are welcome. One of the things about the lockdown and the coronavirus pandemic has been the inspiring and amazing way that people, in spite of all of the challenges and the sadness and the anxiety, have overcome that with uh, such creativity um, through the arts and music. Um, I think of our own virtual choir and the amazing job that they're doing to provide the music for our services, albeit from a distance, and then bringing all their contributions together. It's uh, just been fantastic. But lots of other examples uh, as well. And also in the news uh, at the moment, so much about uh, justice and injustice about thinking about sort of inequality in our world and so on, and the dignity of human life. Well, one of the things that's really inspired me this week is a bringing together of those two things, something about creativity, but also about the dignity and worth of all human beings. And it's a, an incredible film, it's a short film. It comes from Katura in Paraguay. And I'd like to share that with you now before our service begins. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. Mi nombre es Ada Maribel Ríos Bogado, tengo 13 años y toco el violín. Me llamo Juan Manuel Chávez, más conocido como Baby, tengo 19 años y toco el chelo. Este chelo está hecho de una lata de aceite, la madera tirada en la basura y las clavijas son de una vieja cuchara para golpear la carne y para hacer el ñoqui. Y suena así. <risa> Una comunidad como Cateura no es un lugar para tener un violín. De hecho, el violín, un violín cuesta más que su casa. En ese grupo acá mismo encontramos el colado de violín. Y de ese empezamos los instrumentos reciclados. La familia que acá vive recicla todo lo que hay en la basura y se vende. No pensaba antes que yo voy a hacer esa instrumento. Y me siento demasiado feliz cuando estoy viendo a un niño que está tocando un violín reciclado. 
Cuando ya escucho el sonido del violín siento como mariposas en el estómago, así una sensación que no sé cómo voy a explicar. Bueno, la orquesta de instrumentos reciclados es una orquesta que toca instrumentos hechos con la basura. Un, dos, tres... Sin la música estaría decoreíble. La gente se da cuenta que no tenemos que tirar la basura muy fácilmente. Y no tenemos que desechar a las personas muy fácilmente. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, 
to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, God our Father, long-suffering, full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and give us life. You give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. You do not turn your face from us, nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbour. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son and bring us to heavenly joy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Second Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. We're going to listen to our first reading, read for us this morning by Sophie. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout, violence and destruction, for the word of the Lord has become for me, a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him, or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their internal dishonour will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me ha see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instruction. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become, un become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground, unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Ask anyone which commandment is most often repeated in the Bible and I guess you get a variety of answers like don't worship false gods, idols, don't sin, live better cleaner lives, try harder to be good. All these would be far from the mark. No, the most oft-repeated command, the one in fact we've just heard in this morning's Gospel from Matthew, and not just once, but three times. Do not fear. Don't be afraid. And isn't that extraordinary? It turns the whole of religion upside down. No longer is it about trying to be good, striving against the odds to overcome our innate selfishness, but letting go. Yes, actually stop struggling to be different, to be a better person, and trusting God. No more gritted teeth, just a steady, gentle, lifelong release of breath. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus was talking to his disciples at a particularly stressful time for them. The religious authorities were on their backs. They weren't being good Jews. They were disobeying God's commands. Even 
that they were being inspired by the evil one. Jesus is saying to them, don't be afraid. They've been saying the same of me ever since I began my public ministry. For at the end of the day, when God reveals the secrets of all our hearts, it will be clear for all to see that you have been faithful. Don't be afraid of what others think. Then second, Jesus says to them, don't be afraid of those who can kill you physically. That is the Roman authorities. And of course we know for the first 300 years of Christian history, Christians were killed, martyred, just for being Christian. But Jesus goes on, you do need to fear the one who can kill both body and soul together. The one who can destroy your outer life and your deeper self as well. Jesus lived at a time when people believed that there were evil forces, the evil one, which was constantly at work trying to undermine the creative purposes of God. Here Jesus encourages his followers with the most striking picture of God's care for each one of us. He says God is intimately concerned with every little sparrow that comes to harm. God can even number the hairs of our heads. How much more will he take care of you, each one of you? Just as nothing is too great for God to do, so nothing is too small for God to care about. So don't be afraid. We hardly need reminding that we also live in stressful times. The pandemic has brought to light two of the basic facts of human experience. The first is that we're all in it together. We all share in this precarious human existence. The second, that we are all afraid. These realities have been forgotten or buried in the West for a very long time, hundreds of years. But these are the truths which when all's going well and we feel in control of almost everything, we hide from and pretend are not there. Why is it that in what we call normal times, there are inexcusable, unavoidable in inequalities in our world, and not just out in Africa or in parts of Asia, but right here on our own doorstep. And on the whole, we just let them happen. We don't protest. Most of us do very little about it. Now, because we've been forced to recognize that the homeless and the more vulnerable are more likely to catch and to spread the virus, we've come to our senses and moved heaven and earth to house them and protect them. And the huge rise in unemployment has thrown swathes of the population, respectable and not so respectable alike, into the arms of food banks and other charities. We're all in it, we all belong together. The movement towards solidarity and mutual care has been a social miracle in these last three months. 
and we must pray and work that it may result in radical, lasting change into a more just and human society. For the evident growth in community spirit is a living expression of the kingdom which Jesus came to bring about. Fear not, little flock, for it is my Father's will to give you the kingdom. The second reality that has been uncovered in these last months is that we are all afraid. We've been brought face to face with the precariousness of human existence. We are no longer in control. We still, even the scientists still don't know much about the threat facing us and our survival. We can no longer plan for more than two or three weeks ahead. Many people don't know when or even whether they'll have a job and so financial security for their families ever again. And deepest of all, we are afraid of death itself. That last fear, the fear of our mortality, has always dogged the human race. What differentiates us from the rest of the animal kingdom, this yearning embedded in every human soul, is that we are destined for better things, wonderful things. At its deepest, a longing to be one with God our Creator, who has made us in his own image, made us to share his very life. That's what it means to be human. This longing has always been dogged, though, by the sense of our own mortality. The reality that one day we shall die, and the fear that all these great aspirations and all our achievements will return to dust. But this is the mind-blowing reality, the great breakthrough. God, in becoming human, shares our very mortality. God, in Jesus, died a death like ours. But God, it's so easy to say it, but God raised Jesus from the dead. God broke the power of death for all time, for each one of us. So we have to let go, let go, release our grip on all we hold precious in this life, and trust God, our all-knowing and ever-loving Father, to take us and hold us safe and mould us into that unique person he longs to dwell with him for all eternity. This pandemic is so deeply unsettling because it shows us human life in all its fragility. But it is a wonderful opportunity to come to our senses to return to the heart of God, to allow God to be God in us and in the whole created order. I want to finish with a poem by Anne Lewin, based on those words of Julian of Norwich, which we know so well, words spoken to Julian at the time of another great pandemic, the Great Plague. The poem is called Dark Moments. All shall be well. She must have said that sometimes through gritted teeth. 
Surely she knew the moments when fear gnaws at trust. The future loses shape. Gethsemane. The courage that says all shall be well doesn't mean feeling no fear, but facing it, trusting God won't let it go. All shall be well doesn't deny present experience, but roots it deep in the faithfulness of God, whose will and gift is life. Let us affirm together the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our virtual choir sing the anthem and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, God so loved the world Music by John Stainer.
Our prayers of intercession are led this morning for us by Julie. For the church, for the world, for those in need, and for each other, let us pray to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for the church entrusted to the disciples and the world into which they were sent. As Jesus called the twelve disciples, make all members of your church faithful followers in the way that he taught. Strengthen the hope and love that belong to Christian people. Guide our church leaders as they lead the church through these trying times. We ask your blessing on all who serve in different areas of your church, especially at this time for Will our Vicar for his love, dedication and pastoral care he continues to give to all people in our parish and beyond. We pray for the unity of your church. Help us to see ourselves as rays from one sun, branches of a single tree and streams from one river. May we send out your light and pour forth your flowing streams over all the earth, drawing inspiration and joy from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a world that struggles to live in peace. We know that without justice there can be no peace. Let peace come when all people are respected, regardless of race or religion. Let peace come when the earth's resources are used wisely for the common good and money is used to serve and not enslave the world. Be with leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future pandemic outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on our local community, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for. As servants of our Master, let us be servants to one another, unselfish in our relationships, seeking the common good. The past few months have been difficult, confusing and worrying for many of our residents. We therefore continue to give thanks for our village stores, pharmacy, food delivery companies and all the local businesses who have remained open to serve and help the people of Redbourne, and especially all the many volunteers who have worked tirelessly and have been a lifeline for so many of our village community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are afflicted by physical, emotional or mental illness, especially the problems caused by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. 
You travelled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now, that we may experience your healing love. We remember today all those listed on our pew sheet. Give skill, empathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your Holy Spirit that through their work many will be restored to health. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help. Heavenly Father, your love reaches beyond the grave. At the end of our days on earth, be with us and with those we love and have gone before us. We pray now for those who have recently died, both corona-related and from other causes. We give thanks and remember today Brenda Cust, Daphne Selwyn Fat, and Howell John. May the light of heaven shine upon them as they rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we come out of lockdown and while we wait for the day when we can mix and move freely, teach us then to be compassionate with one another and value more deeply what and who we have. Holding as precious all people and life on earth. We thank you for hearing our prayers and as we move into the coming week, help us to remember our Saviour's words as he sent his disciples out into the world. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen god is love and those who live in love live in god and god lives in them the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Receive this sign of peace. We're going to sing now our second hymn, God Moves in a Mysterious Way.
Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.